Hello everyone, good day. I'm back for another lecture. I am Mr. Mark Anthony A. Dalumpines, your instructor for this course, Organization and Management. In today's lecture, I will be discussing to you the topic, uh, Module 4, with the topic, the organization and its environment. So, most of our discussion in this chapter or module focuses more on the type of organization, its structure, and its environment. Okay, lesson objectives are the following. First is to understand the three options, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation, under which an entrepreneur could organize and their impact to his or her business. So first objective is we will be distinguishing um, sole proprietorship from partnership and corporation. Second is to appreciate the importance of an organization analysis and design in determining the appropriate hierarchical structure of the company. And the third one is to be aware of the stages of development of organizations. And number four is to know the government required steps in starting a business. Okay, nature of organization. So what is the nature of an organization? Okay, let us assume now that Mr. Chua's grocery business has grown by leaps and bounds. He's planning to open up a branch in a more strategic place near city near BC Cobao. This will be handled by his son, whom he has already trained in running his grocery business. Mr. Chua has reached the crossroad of his business. He began to wonder how he should get organized to face the challenges of the future. Shall he remain as a single proprietor, owner, or dilute his ownership by asking some of his trusted relatives and friends to be part owners and contribute more money for his expansion plans? So in the case of Mr. Chua, he's planning to expand his grocery business. And he's thinking if um, he, would re he would remain a sole proprietor or the sole owner of the, the business or um, he can do some partnership or make or uh, make it as a corporation. So that's a plan for that. Okay, to put up a branch, Mr. Chua needs more capital to buy a commercial lot and to construct a building for his second grocery store. He has to improve his credit standing by buying grocery goods payable in 60 days or more. To get a loan from a bank, his present assets are not enough to serve as guarantee. So, he needs associates in his expanding business. Based on his situation, it is very clear that he needs uh, other, he need um, associates in, in expanding his business. What's the best approach in organizing and what are the advantages? Okay, he consulted a lawyer friend and he was given three options the various form of business organization. So the three options are the following, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. A business organization may take the, may take the form of the following. So um, business organization has three forms. These are sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. Now what is sole proprietorship? Sole proprietorship is a type of business or a business owned by one person. Sole, diba? that refers to one person. So if you yourself is the owner of that particular business, diba? the owner is no less than yourself. And that type of business organization is called sole proprietorship. Okay, sole proprietorship in this form, Mr. Chua has a single person holds the entire operation as his personal property, managing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Most businesses are of this type. So most businesses, especially small-scale businesses, small, small and medium enterprises are sole proprietorship, owned by the owner himself. Okay, sole proprietorship is attractive to small investors because they are relatively easy to start up. Also, the owner is entitled to all the profits and that the sole proprietorship collects. That's one advantage of 
sole proprietorship. The owner is entitled to collect all the profits of the business. It can be risky, yes, because there is no separation between the owner and the business. Risky siya because the owner is the man, the one who manages the business. And then there is some separation between the owner and the, the, the person who run the business. So if um, magkamali ka sa pag sa mong business, di ba? So what will happen? So there are there are consequences that could really impact the the growth the the operation of your business enterprise. So nakadepende sa imong pag sa business. Now advantages of sole proprietorship. So formation, it is advantage as to formation, tax benefits because um the owner at the same time the business owner and his personal um, tax diba, will be um, the same. So, tax benefits so na ay advantage siya sa tax collection and decision making. It's disadvantages, liability, taxes, lack of continuity, and difficulty in raising. Okay, back to advantages. It is advantage as to formation because in sole proprietorship, it is very easy to form. Like, ikaw, magunauna ka, mag-business ko o um, shoes. So, in, in form, forming your organization or in forming your enterprise, you will no longer consult, consult other people but yourself. Diba? You will decide by your own. And then that business is sole proprietorship. So, it's very easy to start up. That is one advantage. And for tax benefits, um, uh, advantage siya because uh, ang, ang owner, diba, na siya personal tax at the same time. Yung personal tax is the same with, uh, nakadepende na po siyang income, di ba? Yahang, there, there is no separation kasi. There is no separation between the owner and the one who run the business. And then, for tax is, um, the owner is collected for personal income tax for the business. Uh, unlike sa corporation, ang corporation is mag-tax sa corporation, mag-tax sa empleyado, mag-tax po ng owner. Daghan ang collections of taxes. Then as to decision making, it is also advantage because in sole proprietorship, ikaw lang ang may-ari. Diba? Ikaw ang may-ari at ikaw yung um, maka-decide for the organization or for the enterprise. Since it is um, owned solely by yourself and then decision, decision making power is within yourself as the owner. You can decide. You are the one who will decide. Um, for the organization or for the enterprise. So you will no longer consult others for decision making. Now, it's disadvantages. So things have really advantages and disadvantages. Now, um, sole proprietorship has also its disadvantages. What are those? Liability. So as to liability, um, kisa man ang liable, of course, the owner. The owner of that particular sole proprietorship business organization. Walay, walay lain nga liable, kundi ang owner. Unlike sa corporation, kasi sa corporation, the owner and the one who run the business is different. Diba? It is possible that in sa corporation, the owner is katong dako og stock. And then, in running the business, he is not liable in running the business because there there is a particular individual who manages the business of the corporation. So the owner has no liability in running the business. So unlike sa sole, uh, um, sa sole proprietorship, ang liability na sa owner, na sa tag-iya. So nasa iya tanan ang liability. Wala, wala, siya'y, um, wala siya'y tao nga nag-run because he is the one who ran the business. Taxes. So ganina, ganina advantage siya for personal taxes. Pero nagihapon siya disadvantage sa taxes. So, um, the income of the store is, is considered income of the owner. That means, muda ko po ng personal tax. On the other hand, advantage po siya because dili na mag-tax ang imong corporation and then uh, a personal income tax na siya ang basis. And then, another disadvantage for um, sole proprietorship is lack of continuity. Why? Because, um, uh, unlike sa corporation, sa corporation kasi or partnership, like mo fail ang isa ka, uh, ang, ang fail ang 
like sa partnership mo fail mo partner in running the business pwede mo sa loon di ba to continue the business sa corporation if um if uh, ang owner is uh, mapalit yung stocks di ba kasi sa corporation ang owner is the one who have um kananda ko og percentage sa tax sa stock so kung sa ito yung pinakada ko og stock siya ang mahimong owner or chairman and then there is continuity because if mapalit imong tax uh, mapalit imong stock rather so kato na po siya mag grant so ang corporation established na siya kumpara ni sole proprietorship for continuity for sustaining the operation so sa sole proprietorship um lack of continuity siya if ever magkabali ka sa pagrun sa imong business so wala dili siya ma continue so there is um lack of continuity also it has a difficulty in raising capital because it is solely owned by yourself and then ikaw pud ang raise sa capital dili parehan ni corporation nga easy kayo ang pag raise sa capital like selling stocks so bali gani mo stock mo palit so maka raise ka og capital. So sole proprietorship, ikaw ang mura sa capital, ikaw ang liable, ikaw ang sa taxes and then and then ma, 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 if you have problem in managing the business, there's a possibility not to sustain not, that you can you can sustain the operation of the company. Okay, next type of business organization is partnership. Now what is partnership? So partner, ba? It is an association of two or more people as partners. It refers to an arrangement in which the individuals share the profits and liabilities of a business venture. Ang kalahian niya sa sole proprietorship is, ang sole proprietorship it is owned by a single person. Si partnership is owned by two or more people sharing liability, sharing profits. So, sa partnership, uh, naakay ka share sa profit and then naakay ka share sa liability, sa mga problema, uh, sa organization. Each partner contributes to all aspects of the business, including money. So it is more it is more um, easy to raise capital compared to sole proprietorship because you have your partner. Duha mo magtinabangay. Property, labor, or skill. In return, each partner shares in the profits and the losses of the business. So partnership. So nakay nakay ka nakay kahati sa profits and nakay kahati po sa losses of the business liability now advantages it is easy the same with sole proprietorship easy to form like naki partner and then inexpensive siya. shared financial commitment like um you and your partner have your shared vision shared commitment shared um goals and objectives shared commitment financial commitment to sustain the operation of the business naki ka naki katuwang sa partnership uh, also, complementary skills. Um, one can benefit the skills uh, of one another or vice versa. Like, imong partner kay grabi siya ka skillful ani nga area, ikaw pud ani nga area. So, um, you, you can share, diba? There is what we call complementary skills. Okay, for partnership incentives for employees, advantages pud siya. Okay, disadvantages joint and individual liability so liability is joint and individual liability panalitan um imong imong partner is um wala siya nag wala niya na manage og sakto ang inyong business so apil ka liable so you are affected diba you are affected so kung nangurakot imong partner affected ka diba there is joint and individual liability this agreement among partner as a decision making and like ni sole proprietorship nga siya ra ang mag-decide si ikaw galingon sa partnership is you need to consult your partner so it is possible that there will be these disagreements among partners so that also a disadvantage and then shared profits so whatever the income of the business or the business enterprise or the organization it will be shared between the two of you or with your partners Okay, corporation. This is commonly used for big or large-scale uh, organization. Corporation. So, try to look at the illustration. So, it is an example of a corporation, board of directors having its meeting. Now, corporation is an entity created by law 
that is separate and distinct from its owners. So si corporation is actually created by law or a statutory law that is separate and distinct from its owners. So what I've mentioned, so corporation, the one who will, ser who will serve as the owner is the one who have um, um, great contribution as to stocks. Oh, pinakadako siya stock. Siya ang may mga owner or chairman. And then there, there is separation between the owner and the one who run the corporation. And its continued existence is the in, dependent upon the corporate statutes of the state in which it is incorporated. Now, characteristics of corporation. The corporation has separate legal existence from its owner. So, separate ang legal existence. Lahi si owner, private individual, lahi po ang corporation. Stockholders have limited liability because, um, or like if you are a stockholder of a certain corporation, you will just receive your share. And then, you are not liable for running or you are not responsible for running the business because in a corporation, there is a particular individuals who run the business and stockholders who really um, contribute in raising capital at the same time, na sila ma receive nga return on investment. And then, limited ilang liability. So, yahay kini mga stockholders. They are not liable for running the business. And then, transferable ownership rights. Ownership is in shares of stock. So, easy kay ang pag-transfer sa ownership. Like, ako karon ang dako o ganang stock. And then, napalit sa akong kauban. And then, gamay na akong stock. So, ownership is transferable. Easy to transfer. So, it can really sustain the operation of the company. There is what we call continuity of the company. Another characteristics of corporation, it has the ability to obtain capital relative ease. It is very easy to raise capital and make partnership and, corp and sole proprietorship. Sa corporation, stock mapalit, and then the stockholders will now provide the capital. The corporation can have a continuous life. It can, it can really sustain, can really um, continue from time to time. The corporation is subject to numerous government regulations. That is another characteristic of corporation. The, corpora the corporation must, um, must adhere to certain government regulations, especially set by the Securities and Exchange Commission. The corporation must pay an income tax on its earnings. So that is as to, income, as to tax collection. The si corporation magbayad og income tax sa yang earnings. Uh, stockholders are required to pay taxes, dividends they receive, and then the result is double taxation of distributed earnings. So, daghan ang i-tax, daghan ang kolektahan og tax sa corporation. Ang corporation mag-tax, ang stockholders mag-tax, ang empleyado mag-tax. So, daghan ang owner mag-tax. Daghan og uh, tax collection for corporation, unlike sole proprietorship, like ang owner at the same time, yung personal in as individ uh, private individual, um, the, uh, one, the about one collection of taxes depending on the income. An artificial or juridical person endowed with ab ability for self-management that is the management structure is at the discretion of the board of directors. So the manage the management structure structure of any corporation depends on the discretion of the board of directors because it is the board of directors who will serve as the legislative body who will decide in behalf of the corporation. So kung kinsa ilang um, they believe nga mo mo run or may mo manager sa corporation so they can do it depending on their discretion. Advantages. Advantage siya in terms of um, it, it has separate legal personality, separate uh, ang owner, lahi, uh, ang corporation lahi, and then ang empleyado lahi. Separate legal personality. Ease of raising funds because um, like selling ta stocks, di ba? Easy kay ang relative kay ang pa, relative ease ang pag raise of funds. Continuity it can really sustain ease of transfer of ownership as discussed kanina. Its disadvantages are the following. Its disadvantages: more time and money spent in organizing. So it has more time and money spent in organizing because it is actually a large type of organization. More paperwork, higher tax, and more costly. Okay, comparison and contrast among the various forms of business organization. Now, so sole proprietorship, the owner of a sole proprietorship has complete control over the company's finances and operations. Sole proprietors are not required to consult with anyone when it comes to making business decisions. 
pay taxes twice, first on the business earnings and then on personal income when the owners draw draws a salary or takes distribution from the company. The sole proprietor can maintain complete control over all aspects of the business. There are no shareholders to pacify and no board of directors to appease. That is for sole proprietorship. Now for partnership, all partners have input regarding how the company's resources are used and other important business decisions. All partners are responsible for making decisions that will impact the business. This may provide multiple viewpoints which could potentially lead to better business decisions. Okay, for corporation, it have an advantage when it comes to raising capital for the business, um, the ability to raise funds through the sale of stock. Corporations file taxes separately from their owners. And owners of corporation only pay taxes on corporate profits paid to them in the form of salaries, bonuses, dividends, while any additional profits awarded the corporate tax rate, which is usually lower than a personal income tax rate. So another. Now, what is the importance of business organization to the world company? Okay, please pay to this question. Now, what is the importance of business organization to the world economy? It is very important. Business organization are really important in the world economy. So, the whole kasi katabang. In fact, um, in in order to um, the whole kasi katabang. Even having small small enterprise or medium enterprise for sole proprietorship partnership, it has really a big help to the world economy. Like for example, tax collection, de ba? The more corporation, the more tax collected, de ba? Uh, the more business organization, the the more uh, people can earn money or personal income and then the, the more we can collect taxes that could help world economy and many other factors not just not just on tax collection but also on economic aspect of the individuals like um, the more enterprises the more corporation naghan ang makatrabaho for naghan ang maka uh, ma employ and then um, it can really it can really affect the world, world's economy, and many other reasons. Huh? Okay, next, nature and role of the firm. Nature and role of the firm. So the firm or the organization has its nature and role. Actually, a firm or an organization has different areas of management. So we have human resource management. We have marketing management. We have operations management, we have financial management, material and procurement management. That is why um, there is what you call, in, in a certain company, there is what you call HR manager, marketing manager, so on and so forth. So an organization is divided into different areas, right? areas of management. So na ay focus sa empleyado and that is human resource management. Na ay area na nakafocus sa marketing, diba? production, selling, um, uh, no, advertising, selling of the product, diba? Um, looking for potential market, and that is marketing management. Na po yung area sa management, yung na-focus sa operation, diba? Naka-operate rank on files, operations management, run by supervisors. And we have financial management, which focuses on the financial aspect of the organization. Material and procurement management, which focuses on supplies, property, Office management, which focuses on the management of an office, and ICT, information and communication technology management, this time brought by the advancement of technology. Now, we will discuss each of these area of management. The first area is human resource management, which is my field of specialization, or human resource management. In human resource management, the focus of this area of management is to manage people. It is an entire spectrum of management of people or management of employees in an organization that serves to maximize their performance in order to meet the organization's strategic objectives. So, ang role ni HR is to manage manage the employees, manage manage people in order to maximize their full potential and then maximize their their performance in order to meet the goals and objectives of the organization. And accordingly, according to Peter F. Drucker. Among the resources, the only resource who can have an output greater than the sum of its parts is the human resource. That is how important human resources are in an organization. Because 
um, di ba, kay ang empleyado, pag di sila marihok, an organization will stay stagnant or will stay, or will cannot move or cannot improve. You, we, you cannot, uh, an organization cannot meet, cannot meet it, its organization, uh, its uh, goals and objectives. So, human resource management, this area of management focuses on the management of people which serves to maximize their performance in order to meet the goals and objectives of the organization. It covers, among others, the major functions of recruitment, selection and placement, training and development, employer relations, and compensation and benefits administration. So this area of management focuses more on the employees. Diba? Recruiting employees, diba? the right person for the right job, selecting, placing the right person for the right job, training and development, improving the capacity of the improving the capacity of an employee diba? to maximize his or her performance in order to meet the organization's goals and objectives. Employee relations, uh, compensation, uh, benefits, benefit administration. These are some areas which um, considered as functions or major functions of human resource management or the management of people. Next, marketing management. Marketing management, according to business case studies, marketing is the management process responsible for identifying anticipating and satisfying consumer requirements profitably. So, more on si marketing management, nakafocus siya sa marketing. Nakafocus siya sa, sa gaining market, di ba? Um, identifying potential consumers, anticipating and satisfying consumer requirements profitably, di ba? So, ang, 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 ang focus ni marketing management is um, identifying customers, anticipating customers, and then satisfying customer requirements while gaining profit, profitably. Operations management, on the other hand, involves overseeing, designing, controlling the process of production and redesigning business operation in the production of goods and services. See, operations management na focus siya sa production of goods and services. So if the business is more on, produ more on a production, di ba? producing goods, di ba? So, si operations management nakatutok sa um, focusing or producing goods. Producing goods, di ba? Si, si, operations, si operations manager, siya ang mo-oversee, siya ang mo-design, siya ang mo-control um, sa process of production, di ba? To, make, to, to in, increase the productivity of the company. So, it is um, handled or managed by supervisors who really manage the rank and files who are in the operation. Also, if the business is services, so see operations management is more on managing, managing the, managing the overseeing the the processes, controlling of servicing uh, of um, giving rendering service to customers. So nakatotok si operations management sa operations of the organization. It's either to produce goods and services. Uh, operations management, so natin in duha ka setting. Operations management differs in, in manufacturing setting and in service setting as what I've mentioned kanina. In manufacturing setting, ang, to, ang, ang focus ni operations management is to manufacture goods. Diba? The company has to ensure design of effective and efficient production process, timely acquisition of raw materials needed for production, deployment or adequate number of trained workers, and the proper maintenance of equipment and other resources required. May focus ni operations management in a manufacturing setting. Manufacturing meaning the manufacture sila products. So ang focus ni operations management is nasa operation to continue the production of goods and services. The production of goods. And that is um, ensuring uh, there is effective and efficient production process. Di ba? Pas-pas. Um, uh, ang productivity pas-pas. Tagan o ma-produce ng goods. And then timely acquisition of raw materials, di ba? Sakto ang pag um, uh, timing or nasa timing yung pag acquire ng mga raw materials na kinakailangan for production, deployment of adequate number of trained workers. So more on nakatutok siya sa operations in manufacturing goods. Now in service oriented setting like um, business organization who are service oriented, serbisyo, di ba? Public service, di ba? Public service yung 
um, focus on no, no operation and business, the company has to ensure the availability of trained and customer-oriented personnel. But customer-oriented personnel is really necessary because they are the one who will render service. And presence of customer service locations and excellent provisions of customer services. Example of service-oriented um, organization is the BPO, the mga, mga call center, the more on call center um, agents, the ba. These are trained uh, customer-oriented personnel to to address the concerns of the customers. So mga customer service representatives, so mga service-oriented setting na sila. So nakatutok sila sa uh, rendering service to customers. Okay, financial management. From the term financial, it merely focuses on the financial aspect of an organization. The goal of any finance function is to achieve three benefits. Business support service, lowest cost, and effective control of the environment. So the goal of any finance function is to achieve these three benefits Business support service, di ba? Kinangalan tao o enough quarter. Any organization, kinangalan o enough nga finan, uh, uh, enough nga uh, financial budget, di ba? Uh, enough uh, sufficient funds to support the business, business services, lowest cost, di ba? As much as possible, we can minimize the cost, but producing um, effective, effective goods and services, effective control of the environment. Now, toward the end, the firm has to ensure that it sets up effective and efficient internal process design to achieve all this while maintaining the values of being vision-oriented, growth-focused, intuitive, and risk-taking. So, grabe ka risky ang nasa financial management area. Next is material and procurement management. It is the responsibility of the firm to ensure that it manages the procurement process and the supply base effectively and efficiently. In any organization, material uh, material and procurement office or supply and property office. So they, uh, this area of management, um, area of an organization focuses on the procurement process and so, um, 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 supplies, diba? Supply. Um, they are more particular with the necessary supply, uh, what are the demands of the organization, and then the, the proper process, procurement process. This includes buying high-quality products and services at the right price from the right reliable source, based on the right specifications, in the right quality for delivery, and the right time to the right customers. And that is the focus of that is the focus of what? Financial management. Oh, no. Material and procurement management. Area of management. Next is office management. So, nakatotok siya sa office. According to businessorganization.com, office management involves the design, implementation, evaluation, and maintenance of the process of work within an organization in order to maintain and improve efficiency and productivity. So, more on... Um, designing, implementing the process of work in an office, maintaining and improving efficiency and productivity inside the office. So office management. Office managers are uh, commonly first-line managers, mga supervisors, department heads who manage a certain department or a certain office. It is the responsibility of the firm to monitor and review systems that would yield expected outcomes like improved turnover, out, output, sales, etc. It's like the backroom support that will ensure the effective discharge of functions of revenue generating units of the organization. Lastly is ICT management because brought by the advancement of technology, information and communication technology management. This includes a related form of communication or application that encompasses radio, television, cellular phones, computer and network, hardware, software, satellite systems, and so on, as well as the various services and applications associated with them, such as video conferencing and distance learning, information and communication technology management. This area of management focuses on the management of uh, management of information, information, communication areas, and then the technology. So um, because uh, starting 21st century, organizations started to have ICT department, diba? which particular with 
um, network, satellite system, hardware and software, uh, announcements, <laughs> video conferencing, and many others, especially this time. So that ends my presentation. Oh no, I have still one slide. It is the responsibility of the firm to provide the necessary information and communication facilities to all its business units in order to ensure that they are able to perform their functions more effectively and efficiently. Okay, that's it for organization and its um, structure. No, uh, I have still part two of this part two discussion. I will talk on the types of organizational structure. Thank you and God bless.